Well, what can I tell you today? Basically, all the news is bad. Except for that little blip from uh, President Obama yesterday, I think it was, that veterans are supposed to be uh, having an easier time getting benefits for their uh, PTSD problems. But, like I say, it is a speech and more than likely, like many other speeches, is a promise that will most likely not be fulfilled anytime soon. We're dealing with a bureaucracy which is um, all pervasive and we'll see how this works out in the next few years to see if these vets are actually getting the benefits that they are uh, entitled to. So that's for starters. There are, as we now find, find out, 27,000 retired oil wells and gas wells in the Gulf of Mexico alone with absolutely no oversight whatsoever from anybody. Some of these oil wells have been temporarily capped, which means that the usual capping procedure of these wells um, is somewhat less stringent, you might say. And so we've got 27,000 of these retired wells out there. And this just in the Gulf of Mexico alone. We live in a system where reporters and average citizens are to be kept away from any kind of evidence of this manufactured disaster in the Gulf becomes a criminal activity if, as the Coast Guard just announced, if you happen to be within 65 feet of any boom or any sort of operation um, which is conducted by VP or other various, uh, let's call them, agencies. And you can be slapped with a fine of $40,000 plus jail. Jail time, that is. So that pretty much um, eviscerates uh, the freedom of the press in this country. And I'll post a link to a story, um, an interview actually, on uh, Democracy Now! with one of those uh, reporters, or actually a photojournalist, who was prevented on a public road from taking photographs in Texas City, which is near the BP refining uh, facilities uh, in Texas, which released a huge amount of chemicals into the air a few weeks before this Gulf spill, he was harassed and detained and basically the story didn't hit the mainstream news, did it? Then you have the G20 meeting in uh, Canada and it becomes fairly obvious that even peaceful protesters can be intimidated. In fact, that was most likely the goal to basically intimidate the public into believing that you can't, you know, you can't overstep your boundaries or whatever because there are a few agitators out there setting cars on fire and so on. Well, I would question the entire um, footage of all of this because, you know, who knows? 
I mean, this, this is an old and tried tactic um, of basically um, agent provocateurs coming into demonstrations, going completely overboard so that you can basically suppress everyone else. I mean, this is absolutely nothing new. So I'm not even sure why people are surprised about this and that they can't see, you know, the grander picture. Moving on to other issues. So now the G20 has decided, listen, you know, the stimulus didn't work. We're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to pour more money into the real economy, you know, now that we rescued the banksters or bankers or financial institutions through public money, I might add, um, that wasn't enough. No, of course it wasn't enough. Now there's going to be um, a sort of IMF-style austerity program um, that's going to be imposed on essentially every Western nation. And these austerity programs, uh, by the way, don't include scaling back our warfares and our uh, expenditures on the military and on killing other people in other countries. No. That's completely off the table. The austerity programs are going to be imposed on you and me and our future generations after us. So now the Republicans and Democrats, I might add, are completely for all this austerity for the general population. So the first thing they're going to do is after the election, and mind you, this is going to be after the next election, in a lame duck Congress, so to speak, where nobody's risking, you know, re-election immediately, they're going to impose those cuts on your programs, such as Social Security, which they're now telling you, oh my gosh, the whole thing is just, it's not sustainable, you know, despite the tax increases um, a few years back, which precisely took into account the baby boomer generation. That was the whole purpose for the funding of it. But you see, you can't have that. Social Security is lumped in with the general fund, which then borrows from Social Security funds in order to finance further wars and other stupid agendas. But you see, no, you're, you don't have any reason to complain. You know what? Um, your Social Security is, is really an entitlement program. You're not the one who paid any taxes for it. My gosh, we, the largesse of government, it's a handout to you. And who are you to assume that you're going to retire at the age of 65 when the age of retirement really should be 70? Like, you know, two years before you're dead. So this is what they're going to try to tell you. And both parties are in on it. I would like to add one thing in conclusion to my video here. Social Security was set up precisely because the stock market failed and crashed as a minimum insurance policy that people who are ill, old, or disabled wouldn't be left out completely on the street. And now they want to privatize Social Security. In other words, Social Security, you're supposed to be investing it in the stock market. I mean, if this isn't a complete oxymoron, I don't know what is. But anyway, you're going to be sold on it and you're going to believe it all the way. And especially the younger generation is sold on it because you can't possibly imagine what it's like to be disabled, to be ill, or to basically not be able to work at the age of 65 because no damn employer is going to hire you.